All right, so this is the fifth video of System Verilog English playlist, and in today's video we will cover loops and threads. So these are the loops which we are going to cover. These are for loop, while loop, do while, for each, repeat, and forever. So in System Verilog, various loop constructs are available for controlling the flow of the execution in your code. Each type of loop has its own specific applications and use cases. So each loop has its own unique purpose and application. The choice of which loop to use that will depends on your specific requirements and the type of task you need to accomplish in your code. So starting with the for loop. The for loop is used when you know the exact number of iterations in advance. It is commonly used for iterating over a range of values, such as iterating through arrays or performing fixed repetitive task. This is the syntax for. Then in bracket you have to first uh, initialize the variable, then the condition, and then the modifier. In case of for loop, you have to define one variable, one loop variable basically. So with an example, we will understand in a better way. For int i equals to zero. i less than five, i plus plus. So what we are doing here, one loop variable that is i, it is of integer type. We are initializing this with zero. Then the condition is i less than five. Means in our loop i should always be less than five. And then i plus plus. That means this i will be incremented by one. In begin end we have written dollar display iteration percent d i. That means we want to print the value of i. So what this code snippet will do in for loop, the value of i will increase from zero to one to three, four, and next would be five. <laughs> so am I right or wrong? Yes. So it will not reach to five because the condition which we have given here is less than five. So this loop will move from zero till four. So total five times this code will execute, and the corresponding value of i will be printed. So in this manner, you can use for loop in your code. Next is while loop. The while loop is used when you need to repeatedly execute a block of code as long as a certain condition is true. So this while loop is suitable for scenarios where the number of iterations is not known in advance. That means. you can use for loop only when you know the number of iterations you know how many number of times you have to run your loop but what if you don't know so in that condition you will use this while loop so the syntax is while and then the condition here is the example int counter equals to 0 while counter less than 5 in begin end we have written dollar display iteration percent d counter and then counter plus plus So what we are doing here? First, we have uh, initialized this integer variable counter with zero, and then we have given uh, the while loop with condition counter less than five, and then in begin end uh, we have given the other command. So what it will do? Counter will start from zero, and uh, its value will start printing zero. Then we have given this counter plus plus also. So zero, one, two, three, four. Whenever this counter value reaches to five. the condition will not true and hence the execution will come out of this loop so this is how you can use the while loop in your code make sure whatever condition you are giving your loop will run as long as the condition is true once your condition will be false the loop will not execute and your execution will come out of the code next is do while so this do while loop is similar to the while loop but it guarantees that the loop body is executed at least once even if the condition is false initially so what was happening in case of while loop if the condition is false the loop is not executing but in case of do while loop even if the condition is false this loop will execute at least once this is the difference Here you can see the example int counter equals to zero. Then do in begin end we have written dollar display iteration percent d counter then counter plus plus and then we have given the condition while counter less than five. So suppose you have given the value counter equals to six. So in that condition this uh, 
कंडीशन विच वी हैव गिवेन इज नॉट ट्रू देन ऑल्सो दिस लूप विल एग्जीक्यूट वन टाइम दिस डू वाइल लूप इज कॉमनली यूज फॉर यूजर इनपुट वैलिडेशन और एग्जीक्यूटिंग अ ब्लॉक ऑफ कोड एट लीस्ट वन नेक्स्ट इज फॉर ईच लूप दी फॉर ईच लूप इज स्पेसिफिकली डिजाइन फॉर इटरेटिंग ओवर एलिमेंट्स इन एन एरे और कलेक्शन it simplifies the process of iterating through arrays and is commonly used for data processing and manipulation tasks so whenever you want to execute your code through the uh, element of an array in that condition this for each loop is a good option here is the example int array of 5 then we have defined the uh, elements of this array 1 2 3 4 5 for each array of i and then in begin int we have written dollar display and we have to print the value of i and array of i so what we are doing here first the value of uh, i will be printed and then the corresponding value of the array i is nothing but the uh, index value in this array and array of i is nothing but the actual value of that index so in this way you can access the each element of this array our next loop is repeat so this repeat loop is used when you need to repeat a block of code a specific number of times so similar to the for loop but yes without an explicit loop variable so in case of for loop you have to define a variable and then only you can use the for loop but in case of repeat loop there is no need of defining any variable and this is the reason for any simple repetitive task it's very suitable you can use this here is the example repeat 3 in begin end we have written dollar display hello world so what we are trying here we have to uh, display this hello world 3 times so we have given the command repeat 3 suppose you want to uh, uh, print this for 10 uh, times so you can write here repeat and then 10 Also, you can write this code by using for loop also, but there you have to define one variable. So in real time, wherever you are writing a code, there you have to decide uh, what is a perfect fit for your coding requirement. Whether you really need a for loop or repeat will be fine for your code. That you have to choose. Next is forever loop. The forever loop is used when you need to create an infinite loop that continues indefinitely until you explicitly break out of it. Mean to say wherever you are using this for loop, mean to say wherever you are using this forever loop, your code execution will go into an infinite loop until you will give an external break or dollar finish command. then only your execution will come out of this forever loop so do take care of that while using forever loop here is the example we have written forever in begin end we have written dollar display the loop runs forever or whatever uh, uh, code you have to uh, execute you can write in this begin end block but make sure after that you have given dollar finish command otherwise it will enter into an infinite loop and your pc or your laptop start hanging So this is all about loops guys in next part of this video we will cover system verilog threads so threads are fundamental units of concurrent execution in system verilog they allow you to create multiple execution contexts often called threads which can run concurrently and interact with each other system verilog supports various types of threads so in system verilog threads are concurrent execution units that can operate independently and concurrently each thread has its own context and multiple threads can execute simultaneously allowing for modeling parallelism concurrency and synchronization threads can execute sequential procedural code run concurrently in parallel or react to specific events in system verilog these threads are a powerful feature for modeling the concurrent behavior both in hardware design and verification they enable the modeling of complex parallel system and interactions that are fundamental part of modern electronic systems so yes understanding how to use threads effectively is essential for designing and verifying complex hardware systems there are mainly two types of threads in system verilog procedural threads and concurrent threads in procedural threads we have initial and always block which we have already covered in our verilog lectures if you have not seen you can access the verilog playlist in today's video we will cover this concurrent threads in detail 
These concurrent threads include fork join, fork join any and fork join none. Talking about the application part of these threads, so it is used in concurrent hardware modeling, test bench writing, parallelism, uh, whenever we design state machines, there we need these threads, concurrent events, protocol handling, synchronization. So these all are multiple scenarios where uh, we need these threads. So starting with the fork join. The fork join construct is used to create concurrent threads in system Verilog, where all threads are executed in parallel and synchronization in enforced by the join statement. It ensures that all created threads complete before the main thread proceeds. So here in this fork join, all threads started with fork execute concurrently they can have independent execution paths but they must synchronize at the join statement it is commonly used when you want to execute multiple threads in parallel and ensure that uh, they all complete before moving on here is the example module then folk join example that is the module name which we have given initial and then dollar display before folk join and then we have given folk command after that, first we have defined the first thread. So in begin end, first we have written dollar display thread one started. After five time unit delay, we have written dollar display thread one completed. Then we have defined thread two. Here in begin end, dollar display thread two started. After ten time units delay, dollar display thread two completed. And then we have given join command. After that, dollar display after fork join that will be displayed and then dollar finish so basically what we are doing here in fork join we have defined two different threads so as per the property of uh, concurrent execution these both threads will be executed parallelly and this is the main application of this fork join whenever you want in your code that uh, uh, different different threads will execute at same time there you can use this fork join this join statement ensures that both the threads will be completed and then only the execution will move onwards. So suppose in your fork join you have defined three threads. First thread is taking 10 time units, second thread is taking 20 time units and third uh, thread is taking 30 time unit. So your execution will come out of this fork join block after 30 time units because it will wait until all the threads execution will be completed. So this is how fork join works. Next is fork join any. So this fork join any is also uh, similar to fork join but the difference is in case of fork join any. Uh, it will not wait to complete all the threads mean to say if you have defined four threads in that fork join any then it will wait until any one of the threads will be completed and then the execution will move forward that means it will come out of that block this concept might be used when you want to simulate a scenario where you are interested in the result of of the first thread that completes and you are not concerned about the others so in your fork join any you have uh, uh, defined three threads and these three threads are taking different different times for the completion but here while simulation your execution will not wait for the completion of all the three threads however if any one thread will be completed then it will move towards the next part of your code this is the main concern of folk join any so here is the code only the difference is instead of join we have written join any so that will help to proceed once any thread completes. Now it's your job to simulate the given code and check what output you are getting. Next is fork join none. So fork join none is used to create concurrent threads without any explicit synchronization. Threads execute independently and the main thread doesn't wait for their completion. This allows threads to run concurrently and the main thread continues its execution without waiting for the threads. That means no matter how much threads you have defined and how much time uh, they are taking for the completion your join none statement will not wait for the completion of any of the thread and the execution will proceed forward here is the code so this code is also same only we have replaced with this join none so here it will not wait for the completion of any of the threads 
सो ये थ्रेड स्टार्टेड विद द फोक एग्जीक्यूट कॉन्क्योरेंटली विदाउट वेटिंग फॉर ईच अदर और फॉर द मेन थ्रेड देयर इज नो नीड फॉर अ जॉइन स्टेटमेंट एक्चुअली इट्स यूजफुल वेन यू वॉन्ट टू मॉडल पैरलिज्म वेयर यू डोंट नीड टू वेट फॉर द थ्रेड्स टू कंप्लीट एंड यू कैन कंटिन्यू विद अदर टास्क गाइज मे बी फ्यू ऑफ द थिंग्स आर नॉट क्लियर टू यू दैट इज क्वाइट ऑब्वियस सो फॉर नाउ जस्ट फोकस ऑन द कंसेप्ट part because this is the beginning of the course and now I, it's not supposed to uh, make clear all the things so just focus on the concept prepare notes gradually when we move towards the next videos and do the practice of system very log codes there you will get all these concepts in more uh, better way that will be more understandable to you here whatever code we have seen actually it's not a complete code i am providing you the snippet of the code just to make you understand the concept but whenever you will write a code in real time whenever you will work on a project there the things will be more clear that how uh, you can use these uh, uh, threads how you can use different loops and how it will impact your code its performance uh, that time it will be more clear to you so don't panic be patient focus on your concept and continue with system very log lectures if you like today's video give it a thumbs up and subscribe vlsi point to get the notification of all new videos we will meet in the next video